Well, welcome back, my friends, to another rousing rendition of Choir Boys Cutler Outdoors and LT Wright Mantis Outdoors SOSPS Burlap Mountain rendition, if you will. Before we get there, guys, listen, there was a time in this country where 22 veterans a day took their own lives. Now, stats show that number's going down, but anything above zero is unacceptable. Vets, we love you. You have a place here. We back to blue over here. We support Leo. Hey, do that scab, even though nobody understands it. Well, we try not to break the damn law. I mean, I do here and there, but I try not to. And finally, if you are an addict, never quit quitting. So here's the deal, guys. Quick caveat. I, I'm not in the military, never been in the military. I know that the physique shocks you, but I like saying that ever so often. Now, listen. This is an LT right sent to me by JR. I've got two more from JR to demonstrate, and I've got one from Timbo437 to demonstrate, and I'm going to tell y'all, I am super overly impressed. Now, everybody's like, well, Gabe, it took, well, listen, this is a journey, all right? So, in this part of my journey, we're hitting the LT rights, the battle horses, things like that. This is a phenomenal knife, all right? I don't know if it sops, I, 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 it, we're just going to call it the Mantis Outdoors. Let me give y'all some uh, specs on it. Blade length is six inches. Drop point, it is a, it is a drop point. It's 01 tool steel. I love 01. Now, here's the deal. It's a Scandi grind, which is awesome. Made in the USA. The handle is what I want to talk about, all right? It's that scallop. I believe it's G10. No, it's micarta. It's that scallop micarta. It's got orange liners. It's just abso-freaking-lutely amazing. Uh, this one actually came from Old Town Cutlery, and it is beautiful. It, it's that brown micarta with the orange liners in its scallop. It's super comfortable in hand. Now, the exact thickness, I, I was trying to, the way they've got the specs here, it's kind of hard to, to find everything. Um, the overall length is 12 inches. I, it never gives me an exact thickness, so I apologize on that. I can tell you it's every bit of three sixteenths. Might be a quarter. It, it is a thick, thick knife. But that Scandi grind, this is one of the sharpest knives that I've demonstrated in the past couple weeks. I'm just telling y'all. And and what we do at the end, y'all know how we do. We, we start off with shaving paper. We end it with shaving paper. I was thoroughly impressed all the way through with this knife. Those scallop handles are super comfortable. It fits my hand very well. And that, that's kind of why that first part where I'm showing you the knife, showing you the different hand grips. I have probably a large to XL maul, the maul part of my hand. Um, it's I think it's four and a quarter across, if that gives you any idea. But I like to show you the different grips, the different things with it. And this knife is supremely comfortable. The other thing I noticed too, right now we're in a swamp ass season and I'm sweating a ton. Never any slippage, no hot spots. I'm going to show you all quite a few things throughout this video. I've been trying more and more and more and more to cut out the bullshit, cut out the walking around. Just show you slicing, chopping, cutting. And that's what I really tried to do. And just pay attention throughout this video, guys, at how many, not only how many different materials we cut, but how many times we cut them. This is that two inch toe strap, ratchet strap, whatever you want to call it. It's got the red thread down the middle. This is wood knot tough. Now, here's the deal. This is a bushcraft knife, hunting knife. This is whatever kind of knife you want it to be. All right, with that drop point, it's a pretty good piercer, okay? With that scandy grind, it's super, super sharp. But here's the thing, guys, and here's what I want you to hear me on this. The edge held up unbelievably throughout this thing. We bang it into some hardwood, slam it up and down into some knots, not one lick of edge damage. I'll show you when we get there. Now, here's this, our high pressure air hose. And let me just say this. We strike a ferro rod with it, with this 01 tool steel, Scandi grind. I'm not sure how hard it would be to sharpen in the field, just being honest. Probably wouldn't be too hard to maintain and, 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 and hone up. I don't know if you want to do a full sharpening, but I'm sure with, with, with your mad sharpening skills that everyone but I possess, you'll be doing great. The thing is this, guys. 
this this segment ran yes it ran a little long but i wanted it to because once this knife got going man it just kind of glided through this stuff that's about inch and a half two two inch high pressure air hose probably three sixteenths to a quarter inch thick you can see the different layers there the black and the red it is high pressure and the knife just did an amazing job you'll see it again um with some of the with the high high stuff sandblast hose high pressure sandblast hose we cut water hose we cut a little bit of everything man i tried to include as much cutting in this video as i could i tried to wear down the edge as much as i could that's why if you're like dude we can move on i really 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 wanted to stress this blade check the edge retention do all that Got about honestly four or five hours of work in this uh, particular demonstration just cutting 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 now right here you'll see a couple quick good stabs and we move all around another segment that i lingered on a little bit but again i meant to okay this knife is insanely sharp but it held its edge to me i don't like one tool options i don't i'll never carry one knife but if i had to if i was going out in the woods and this is all i had i'm fine i'm just telling you right now now, a couple caveats, guys. I say this all the time because it's the truth. I am a novice at best when it comes to woodworking and things like that. Nothing we do is scientific. It's just I, I see the knife. I try to pick out certain demonstrations I want to do. I try to keep it pretty even across the board no matter what we're reviewing. And I've been asked, Ab, if this is a woodcraft, bushcraft knife, why, you know, why are we cutting tired? Well, simple. That's what I have around me. I, you know, how many times can you shave feather stick, guys? And, and you've got to be able to shave feather sticks. That's an essential part of starting fire. But you don't want 10 minutes of feather sticking. So what we do is we show you a little bit of everything. I'll show you in an industrial environment. show you at the stump. show you in the swamp. If I can use this knife to great effect, just think about your skill set. And I'm being honest. If you got a good skill set, this is a tremendous knife for you. It came razor sharp. I, I've said this a million times. I'll say it a million more. If you have a sharp knife, you are never out of the fight. And I'm not talking about, you know, because I always get, is it good for self-defense? Yeah, it's a knife. It's as good as any knife. I'm not talking about that kind of fight. I'm talking about in a survival situation. And here's the thing, I, you know, What's the likelihood of getting in a ton of survival situations? Well, if you're a poor planner all the time. But every now and then, man, if you hunt, if you fish, there's just going to be days you get out, you may have to stay overnight, you may, just something may go wrong. That's life. You got a sharp knife, you in the fight. You're less likely to get hurt with a sharp knife. You're, you're able to accomplish more tasks. Now, here we're doing the John Peters stab test. It, it, I think it wound up going through three quarter-inch pieces of sidewall attire. Not to mention, this is the knife that cut up. This is all brand new sidewall. And you see that, that scallop micarta there, just absolutely beautiful. Now, you'll see my hand fills it up, but I can get all four on it, wrap my thumb good. It's got a nice little choil there at the bottom. The aesthetics, the ergos to me, really, really scream. It come, the fit and finish was first class. Right here, let's talk about this. This stump has knots all through it now we're going to process you'll see this process all the way down to the knots and then what we're going to do is hammer the knife in this is strictly testing the edge that's all we're doing we're seeing does the edge roll does it chip does it damage now if it did and and once y'all see what i'm talking about here as much as we do this if there were some microchips i would say that would be expected matter of fact i was stunned there wasn't a few because not only did we baton through it we hammered it into that stump, that old red oak stump. Now, real quick, guys, some quick shout-outs. Donnie B. All Days, marching to 10,000. Get over there and subscribe to him if you're not. Joe, Steel Forge and Fire, Sword and Knife, my partner on Blade Talk. With Scab and Joe, my other channel, go subscribe to Joe. Go subscribe to Blade Talk. Joe and I will be doing our Veterans Raffle. Thank you for everybody who participated in the next couple weeks. We will announce a live and we'll do our giveaways. There's 10 or 12 packages. We're fired up. We're excited. Thank you for being patient. That's coming. Carl Ruger and Eric Hussein 
are on a march to a thousand. They're getting super close. Please, Carl Ruger and Eric Hussein, there's going to be links to everybody in the description. Last thing, and we'll get back to the knife. This Friday night, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 7 o'clock Central, I'll be going live. 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 7 o'clock Central with Shane Gables. Shane's an awesome guy. He's got a giveaway. We're going to shoot the shit. He's going to give a bench made away. We're going to start some shit. It's going to be a good time. Be here 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time Friday night. Then Saturday night, I will be going on uh, Neve's Knives with Jared. I'm excited about that. I think we're going on at 8.30 Eastern Standard, 7.30 Central. I'll be doing some shorts to, to keep you posted on both of those. But Friday and Saturday night, be with us. Now, this particular tree, to my dear tree-hugging friends, if you will look behind me, you'll go ahead and see some silt fence and some construction fence in the background. All of this has to come out. I'm actually pretty sick about it. They wanted to, uh, I wanted to use this, process this up. I'm making some walking sticks. This is all going to get bulldozed in the next couple of weeks. That's the only reason I'm cutting it down. And again, you can see the, the orange uh, construction stuff in the back. That means they're coming. I'm going to have to find some more swampland. Not happy. However, this knife handled insanely well. Now, I didn't go crazy with the chopping, okay? That, I don't think that's what this is made for but you can. I wanted to show you the control. You see the really good bites it gets there. And again, this is my test where I simply hold it and do some chopping. The damn thing held up insanely well. Again, I want y'all to bear in mind the stump that we just batoned and beat the hell out of this edge with. Then we go out and we chop a couple of these, or chop this sapling down, only one, but we cut it in a bunch of different places. We've cut ratchet strap. We've cut water hose. We've cut canvas hose. We've cut high pressure air hose. We cut a bunch of sandblast hose. We've cut as much shit in this video as I've cut in any other video. And right there again, you see the great bites. And again, this is that same little sapling that has to come out. But I just wanted to show y'all how quickly we could get through it. It handled insanely well, man, and I actually wound up making this kind of as a marker. Um, they wanted a, a marker for the corner, so I kind of made a marker there. Overall impressions of the knife. First and foremost, came out of the box, razor sharp. Fit and finish, 10 out of 10. The handle, for me, and, and again, guys, I can only speak to what's in my hand. I can only speak to the offering that I'm testing. I don't make wide, broad assumptions unless I've tested 9, 10, 12 knives from a company, okay? For me, this handle is a 10 out of 10 for me. Sharpness, 10 out of 10. Edge retention, 10 out of 10. This, this knife right here, the Mantis, is, is one of the most impressive knives that, to me personally that I've reviewed. It held up insanely well. And again, this is the LT Wright Mantis Outdoors, S-O-S-P-E-S. Uh, Burlap Mountain, and it came from Old Town Cutlery. They go anywhere from about two fifty to two ninety nine, but this thing is just the beast, man. The edge held up, the spine ninety degrees, super sharp. The balance excellent, and through all that beating, all that batoning, the Donnie B all day throw it at the stump test. No slippage, no looseness in the handle scale. So overall, what do I give it? I give it a ten out of ten. I love it. Now listen, this part you need to understand. Col no, watch this right here. This is after everything. Simply walked in and did it. Hey, Mikey said the best. Everything's going to be all right. I'm scab. You're not. Badass knife. Thank you, JR. I'm gone, son.